Fans loved how Resident Evil 7 reinvented the franchise and returned to its survival horror roots, but the title was almost a live-service game with microtransactions. Released in 2017, the first-person horror experience emphasized horror by sticking players in a claustrophobic homestead with a family of deranged supernatural killers. The title's focus on scares and atmosphere made Resident Evil 7 the second best-selling game from Capcom after Monster Hunter World, but different decisions cold spoiled that success. Following the poor reception of action-heavy installments like Resident Evil 6, Capcom reinvigorated the franchise with Resident Evil 7. The game adopts an entirely new first-person perspective, with players taking control of concerned husband Ethan Winters, rather than action icons like Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine. Resident Evil 7 takes players to a rundown Louisiana plantation in search of Ethan's missing wife Mia, but upon arrival they are confronted by the murderous Sawyer family. The game's enemies are deadly, and Ethan is woefully outgunned, creating a tense and terrifying experience. Before 2017 many felt that the Resident Evil games were getting bad and Resident Evil 7 reignited the franchise while paving the way for titles like Resident Evil Village and the Resident Evil 2 remake. A recent interview, posted to the Biohazard YouTube channel and reported by Video Games Chronicle, reveals that Resident Evil 7 was nearly a live-service game with microtransactions. Resident Evil creator Shinji Mikami and producer Jun Takeuchi discussed the development of RE7, with Capcom originally envisioning the game as a wildly different experience. The developer wanted the game to appeal to a broad audience by including live service elements, microtransactions, online multiplayer and more. When development was going poorly Takeuchi was brought onto the project, and thankfully the franchise veteran was able to steer Resident Evil 7 towards a single-player survival horror focus. The live-service Resident Evil 7 cold doomed the whole series with Resident Evil Village following up Resident Evil 7, fans are now waiting to see what story Resident Evil 9 will tell. While RE7 went back to the horror roots that defined the franchise's earliest games, Resident Evil Village followed in the footsteps of the more action-focused shooter Resident Evil 4. The game maintained its predecessor's first-person perspective, but a weapon bender and melee attacks made fighting much more pronounced. If Resident Evil 9 follows this formula, it may once again emphasize large-scale set pieces and international espionage like Resident Evil 5 and 6 before it. Resident Evil 7 gave the survival horror saga a fresh start and opened the door for a new renaissance of titles like Resident Evil Village and the ongoing line of Resident Evil remakes. However, Capcom nearly ruined the project by forcing the inclusion of multiplayer elements and microtransactions. Thanks to the work of series veterans like Jun Takeuchi, Resident Evil 7 was able to honor the series' past and forge a new future. Resident Evil 7 is available on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series XS, Nintendo Switch, PC and Google Stadia. Sources, Biohazard YouTube, Video Games Chronicle.